Today I'm looking at a study of churches together, the ecumenical uh, church movement, the organised religious clergy and the face of Christianity in the UK today and my experience and my testimony and a study from what the uh, Holy Word of God says, what the Word of the Lord says, what the the gospel, original gospel that was preached, the testimony of Jesus Christ, what what his word states and just uh, examining by the word and by by my own experience and to uh, lay it down and study it through and consider and reason all, all the uh, components and the, the different perspectives of each uh, each component within in the world, whether that's people in these churches, believers of these churches, members of these churches, church bodies, organised church bodies, uh, looking at the fruit. Not not necessarily are these people saved or unsaved. I, I don't believe that's a, that's a personal measurement only really the Lord could do or that could be done voluntary by the, the, the individual themselves seeking clarification or, or testimony of their own, if they're approved or not. I don't think um, you can say, oh, this person's not saved, that person's not saved. But, solely because they belong to something that is her heretical or unscriptural um, because uh, I know that that I'm weak and I'm vulnerable and I'm sinful and I, 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 I've been caught in these pitfalls and traps myself and I was saved so I know that uh, it's not a mark of a person's salvation it, it, I'm looking at the overall model rather than the apparatus rather than the individual components and considering all those perspectives of each each person each individual each individual on the leadership each individual member and how the world views that how the christian body views it and uh, so this is really an outreach in a study and an outreach in love to to all concerned really the, the, the people in these churches I'm, I'm going to title this um, study and testimony Churches to Hell together and the, Tro the Trojan Alpha Horse that's what I'm going to call this um, study because that's in my personal observations it, it's a yoke to mammon it's yoke to local community groups who are sinful, who lie and who join together in a, a united group and you can't have a divided body with one arm against the other one it's unscriptural, it's unholy and it's undoctrinal and I mean holy, it's it's ungracious it's it's not done in the spirit I'm not, I'm not talking about people sustaining a, a holy perfect life on, and walk continually I'm talking about there's no fruit of the Holy Spirit, although although occasionally there there is a goodness in the hearts of these individuals and good works, uh, but that's not a mark of whether the organisation is actually true. That that's a mark of the individual person within that organisation. Uh, having good people in a corrupt organisation does not give the corrupt organisation legitimacy because the whole organisation could be full of deceived people and this is what happens with church bodies they're all like jelly in a mould and the leadership is the mould and the parish the congregations are the jelly and it, once they're set they're useless they just wobble around and do uh, do a lot of good works with the wrong sort of people um, with misplaced um, 
good intentions, good the, the, the way to hell is paved with good intentions, good motives that are unfounded, are undoctrinal, that are unsubstantiated in the holy word of God, they're out of line of the Lord's will. It's very similar to the Old Testament prophets saying, crying, we've dreamed, we've dreamed dreams and seen visions, and the Lord saith this, the Lord saith that. And the Lord says, I have not spoken to these, uh, I have not called these prophets, I have not given them my word, etc, etc. And there's many accounts of the same thing throughout the Old Testament and played out in our modern modern day religions at all, all levels, crying out that, that their God is right, that oh no, the Bible's wrong, God's changing, he's changed his mind and it's this now and it's that and these churches are far removed from the gospel you don't hear them ever uh, preaching the gospel they um, claim they, they, they claim to uh, preach the gospel or use the name of the gospel in iniquity in a, a captive system of uh, deception and corruption which is yoked to um, to mammon, it's yoked to the devil, it's yoked to the earthly lump, it's uh, and that will corrupt any soul that partakes of it, any soul that touches it will get their hands burnt, will be like um, part of it, they will be a, a, a component of the circuit board on the, on the apparatus, on the graphics card or on the chipboard. They will be running the whole show as a little unit, they may not see their individual part. But these people are serving, what are they serving? Are they founded on the rock? Um, the devils believe in uh, Jesus Christ and um, they know his name and they can speak his name. But they can't testify that his word and testimony in the Holy Spirit, that's the difference. The, the question is, um, have you received Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to measure that which is of the Spirit, that which is of his word? And to know by the Spirit that his word is of the Spirit. And by the Spirit, his word is of the same Spirit. To know that God is faithful and true and consistent and holy and just and right. And you can put your trust in him. He doesn't need to put his trust in us. Because he's found us all wanting. He's found the whole world wanting. And the whole world is sinful and lost. And churches together... Is simply that so I'm going to start with a few scriptures but it's it is an out it, it, <clears throat> I don't want to, um, anybody listening or any uh, spy or any um, person coming across this that may be part of these churches I'm not anti any individual's faith in Jesus Christ or the gospel or any for any good works in the community um, I, I can give credit where credit's due there's a, a lot of wonderful people in all these church systems I don't deny that a lot of good hearted uh, souls who, who are sadly deceived and that's why I uh, vehemently are against um, churches together because I'm jealous for my Lord and my Saviour Jesus Christ he's, my, he's purchased me uh, so I will con uh, contend with him and uh, learn to do that in love and meekness and uh, gravity and soberness to be effective, to be effective witness to those souls who are caught in a deception. So it's an uh, an appeal or, or the invitation of the Lord's word appeals. The Lord hisses, the Lord pleads, the Lord intercedes for every single soul, every single minute. And um, every single soul, every single minute takes their eye off that simple truth. And if you have, if you take your eye off that simple truth, how can you possibly say, share that simple simplicity, that beautiful simplicity that you just repent, you just turn, open your eyes and look and believe, trust the living God, trust in your eyes, trust in your senses, trust in faith, in, in that which you can't possibly understand, you can't possibly know, and you trust in the one who does know, and the, the one that is, 
and you believe and you, then you receive and then you know, then you have a knowledge and you don't need anyone to tell you, you, you can't be robbed of it, you can't lose your salvation, you can't lose the knowledge and testimony of Jehovah, of the Lord Jesus Christ, of God the Eternal Father, his beloved Son, the Word of God, Jesus Christ and God the Holy Spirit and the gift and the blessings and the graciousness of that relationship in your life. Whether these people have that is another matter, but this is not about individuals and their their love for the people that they're, they're around and their love. I have a love for the Mormon church and I personally believe a lot of the Mormons are, it appeals to a certain soul and those souls are of the seed of Israel. And I believe that these people in these, uh, um, I have, I, I've, I've researched through history and through um, the 20th century history and the looking along the vein of the Jewish, the Jewish uh, relationships, the Holocaust, the treatment of the persecution of these people, these beloved people, and the wickedness of these people historically, currently, and the goodness of these people historically and currently you know there's both there's good and bad in all people um a lot a lot of these um jesuits and masons are ha half jewish um hitler was half jewish uh ignatius loyola the jesuit the starter of the jesuits was jewish so there's a lot of things to consider and there's um you can't just taint every jew and persecute and think the whole conspiracy is Jews. It's a very complicated matter to consider. And you know, it's like going to a museum. You'll never um, walk around a museum in a day. You'll never see it in one, one visit. And, you, and, and will you really take it all in and appreciate the depths and everything behind the museum and the history behind the artefacts in a lifetime? You could visit that museum once a week, once a month and just ponder on one artefact and, and gain something every glean something every time. So so many so many things to consider. And um I, I studied the history of the uh, uh the the concentration camps in World War Two and the Third Reich, the organisation of the Third Reich and the similar model of the Jesuit priesthood. And so I want want people to uh, anyone listening to consider my perspective of of my view, taking a view of simply love and and looking for solely the truth, standing still in a, a observation of a, a sincere loving perspective, and viewing it openly and honestly. And when you do study, now a lot, lot of knowledge and a lot of research is circumstantial. Now it, it, each point can be verified by the individual releasing that, that evidence. But evidence collected is at best circumstantial, it's very rarely verified through a, a public lawful a legal trial with lawful witnesses and it's been established that 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 point was a fact. There's been testimony. There's been witnesses. Very rarely do you get confessions of, in an open public, admission. Of um, conspiracy or corruption, it's it's usually dealt with fear, because of human nature and not not rocking the boat, not rocking any upsetting any compromise. Usually the truth is. Uh, very carefully released, if at all. Things are admitted, things are um, prepared before they're unleashed, let's say. Uh, so, looking at the perspective of not not looking at the overall, the Jesuits, like all as one body, but looking at the components of what makes up that organic unit. Think of it as like a um, an apparatus to be uh, taken up and used and then put down and not used. So um, consider that the founders, what I'm suggesting, and like um, Adolf Hitler was um, 
portrayed to have Jewish ancestry, so was Stalin. So I'm look, just looking at the, the the little knowledge I have, looking in the dark, trying to establish some evidence and some things to consider. That uh, Ignatius Loyola was a Jesuit, um, loyal supporter of the Catholic Roman Catholic organisation. And so motive is um, very, very impossible to to nail down. It, it's not that black and white because people's motives fluctuate. People change day to day. How can any pos How can anyone really discern a, a man's heart from one moment to the next? You can only discern their fruit. You can see their fruit, whether it's good or bad. But can you really see whether that whether that person's heart might be good? And they were tripped up to do something bad or they well their motive was bad it, it it's not a, a very easy thing to measure but my my considerations have been that the um a lot of the early founding of the jesuits was a a, a rogue a rogue a group of rogue jews and 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 I personally believe that there's a a big component element behind the Catholic Church of a an apostate, wicked Jewish um, group of people. I still think those people are beloved of the Lord, and I think that I know the Lord is outstretched to all people, and um, I have a testimony that the Lord. Uh, died to save all men and he's he's not a respecter of persons and so those people are not beyond saving they're not beyond repentance and, and, and coming out of those systems and having a change of mind and believing and receiving Jesus Christ and salvation but I've, I, I'm not an expert and I'm just giving a very frail opinion and a view but um based on factual knowledge of the individuals of the few scattering of uh, components of the, the, of those individuals I know making up those bodies and so I, I personally believe behind the Catholic conspiracy is, is a Jewish element and that's a hereditary sinful um, plague if you like a curse problem that is hereditary and there's a certain branch of Israel beloved or not that are very wicked and that they are caught up with the Gentile evil powers and wickedness and they, they, there's a relationship an embedded relationship and um, embiotic um, dichotomy and compromise of um, sin and human problems which were which the Lord had put down on the cross and we are seeing unfold we've seen from the fall of man we know the outcome because Christ was the remedy of the complete fall so we know we, we know that the restoration is already it is it's completed it's just not received in probation and time so in this period of grace of the church age we're seeing it, 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 it carry on towards that end and the yoking and the hanging of this wickedness and the Lord removing himself and removing the good from it so he leaves the the chaff in the fire and then rescues the last gleanings from both races so there's a I, I think there's an I, I definitely see an element of this Jewish and even um, like a Samaritan, half Jew, half Gentile. So there's this relationship and um, these people are just born into that life, that wicked life, that unbelieving life. They're not um, not necessarily have a strong, um, well possibly, I don't know, they, they, they don't, they're not necessarily um, faithful believing uh, Old Testament Jews. They prob there's probably more of a mystical peeping uh, spiritual element into Gnosticism rather than the actual taking from the text what the text actually says trusting in the word of God over a, over opinion or divining or visions or dreams um, there's that sort of uh, vain 
uh, element of seeking out, uh, trusting in man for a, like a prophet, trusting in a, a seer and uh, a diviner to know the will of God and put in their trust in uh, components like that and uh, and all the practices, all, all the various practices that go on in apostasy, the, the, the many diverse expressions of worship in a an apostate religion it's there's just too many to name but i do strongly feel a lot of the uh conspiracy is the catholic church was uh, and, and the jesuits was a, a lot of the influence was a mix a mix of jew half jew half gentile seed and the Jewish dominance of that seed was perhaps zealous for in fear of their families of the Christian there's uh, perhaps there's so many mixed motives that in the wash comes out this one motive which is impossible to read from unless you have all the components but there's certainly a Jewish compromise and element and there's cer certainly and I think that puts a bad light on all Jews, on, on sadly, and all Christians, you see, because it's um, an anti-Christ church, it's against the gospel, it's against lawfulness, it's against independence. The Catholic Church is against any independent nation, because the Catholic Church believes it has a, has the a divine right over all, all, the, all, all um, world powers and all spiritual powers on earth in Christ's stead. He's instead of Christ, he's antichrist, he's a liar, he's unlawful. And anyone yoked to that system, and whether the Pope, on the face of it, is part of a conspiracy or unwittingly serving the good side of a, or the so called holy side of a public religious body who does lots of charitable works or has lots of other people do charitable works on its behalf. Or they sit pretty and, and sit with the kings and rulers of the world making lawful policy for nations and influencing and knitting and weaving its craft and influence. Maybe not seeing it doesn't it's doing anything wrong because it's completely wrapped in its own grandeur and delusion. <clears throat> right, I'm gonna just read some scriptures, right? Um Second Corinthians eleven, chapter eleven. Verse 8, this is the testimony of Paul, the one man, Paul, the apostle to the whole Gentile world, and with the, the fullness of the gospel, I robbed other churches. What's he talking about? I robbed other churches. I robbed other belief systems. I robbed all other members of, of, of any religion, any faith, that get together and form up a body, a church. I robbed other churches taking wages of them so for free Paul's given the complete gospel the mystery the fullness of, of God the salvation forgiveness of sins and the establishing of the of the rock by by the grace of God and the merit and the Holy Spirit and the testimony of the apostles a witness that they died for I rubbed over other churches Taking wages then to do you service. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me. The brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. So the man, Paul, the servant of all, of Christ for all and for all time for you know the Jew and the Gentile right up until whenever this book is going to go out of commission which is never so Paul forever has this in, in, by the grace of the Lord and the Holy Spirit in the Father with the Father in heaven by the grace and by the power has shared the gospel and it's been preserved by the power of God forever because God's faithful and he and he's worked his own with his own hands. He's not burdened anyone. He's not put any burden upon anybody. And he's taken up the whole burden. 
and he's provided for himself, which it it, it it speaks for itself. And as the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boast, boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God know it. But what I do, that I do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. So he's robbed all churches, and anyone seeking your money, anyone seeking your time, anyone seeking your talent, anyone seeking to be the mediator of the covenant, he's robbed. He's he's put out of business. They are redundant. You know first. Timothy chapter 2 there's no no other adv advocate advocate between God and man Christ Jesus for there is one God and one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus Say all churches, all churches together, all churches to hell together, have been robbed, 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 lovingly robbed, so they don't go to hell because they can have salvation and they could grant all salvation and uh, the truth and uh, the gospel, but they don't. They keep it all to themselves and serve the world and politics and the community. Well, let's go to Proverbs. I've studied some scriptures and I've, I've wrote a list, so I've marked them down. But I might not necessarily remember what, what the scriptures are. Verse 9. No, that's not right. It's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman in a white house. No, I've marked that wrong, and I double-checked it, so I can't explain that. Let's try 28, 14. <coughs> and that would have been my... Uh, An important scripture. I have to look, re look it up what it was. I've marked, I've wrote it down. Twenty-eight, verse fourteen. Happy is a man that feareth all way, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. So I put that scripture because no matter how much you reach out, whether you contend with these people, whether you reach out in love, whether you're sincere, whether you're brutish, whether you're sharp whether you're you know um, rebuking these people don't want to know they, they just their ears are closed because they they're loyal to their lump so they cut their ears close off when you mention and and so you, you as a christian you as a, a member of the body of christ that are kept out you are you, you're not part of their thank the lord you're not part of their their clique their 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 church their, their body because they're not of the body or they're not being they've given up the body and and gone over to to the whore they're serving some other woman they're not they're not they're not married to christ they're married to the world they're married to mammon and they're going you know they're the mother's not behaving very well. She's uh, she's in bed with everybody. She's associates with all powers, and they they all um, invest together, and they all make policy together, and they're all unlawful, and they're un they're against our rights, 
and we have the historical knowledge of the the um, royal uh, the Pope uh, I can't remember it I think it was Pope Louis or the the Vienna the convention at Vienna where all the um, royal houses got together and it would organized by uh, the fear putting the fear of the spiritual leader putting the fear into the gathering the nations together and then saying oh uh, if we don't stop if we, if we don't um, bring these independent nations into bring them down they're going to be a threat to our little you our little unit our little yoke our little powerhouse of unlawfulness that we dominate and so a pact was made to destroy in agreement to pr the protection of Europe the protection of Europe not the individuals not souls not people the protection of their Europe and their powerhouse and their monopoly that any uh, lawful independent Christian God fearing nation would have to be brought down because it would be a threat to the world the goodness of the world the goodness of their church the goodness of their designs for you the goodness of Satan, the goodness of lies, and the goodness of murder. The Lord said, "Love thy neighbour as thyself. Uh, love those who, you know, pray for those who willfully persecute you, and spitefully abuse you, and use you. Pray and love them." He didn't say kill them and murder them. He didn't make secret pacts to be loyal to uh, the the church mother to go and damage babies in their mother's wombs to persecute the Jewish seed and to keep down anything that's a threat to the Roman Catholic Church before before that child's born and, and, and that fruit takes root in people's individual lives and you get this mess of activity so you can't pinpoint the conspiracy the conspiracy's started by the influence of this fat lump sitting in the bed and it's sunk all the way through through the mattress through through the bed it's hit the floor it's sunk through the roof through the front room floor into the concrete and it's plummeting plummeting down to to the bottom of hell where all these people are going and, and it, all these people are yoking themselves and chaining themselves to this this um this uh awful awful body of unbelief believing that it's believing and christian and then you get community workers praising praising these um good works of these people which which you can't argue against they are you know they're, they're all good people it's good people in all things good people in hit in the third right hitler was a nice kind person to his own as i'm sure all these despot um people were you know they love their own they might have been fearful and paranoid and murdered their own but um i'm sure they had that within in in the mix somewhere in their hearts only the only only the law can look upon a heart and and judge we can only judge ourselves or judge the fruit of the world or or a belief is it is that is that of the scriptures or is that not of the scriptures no that is not they uh, and people can do that themselves that's what the bible's for that's what the word of god is for the believer the one the people who've believed received jesus and believed and the books for the saints for anyone who past present and future that receives the lord and his salvation the son of the holy eternal father you believe in his son receive his son you receive you receive his blessings of his book his gifts and his gifts all his gifts are in christ and christ gives them liberally to who he who he pleases and who who seeks him why right, revelation 18 verses 4 and 5 this is a future prophecy when the world goes into judgment tribulation and it's talking about the the heart the catholic church the babylon vatican city the where the jesuits are where the harlot is where 
where the power of Satan seat resides in all the world's nations. And this uh, church riding on the back of the world, on the back of those powers. And they're all getting deliciously rich with their with the, with the uh, relationship and the power and monopoly of this unlawful lie from the beginning, how it's murdered, how it's quenched life before it's had a chance to realise it's a, a, even a life. And it's tried to shape, it's tried to steer, it's tried to cultivate and it influences and it infiltrates. And I, hence why I considered that a part, part of the motive is a Jewish one, and it's fear of, of Roman uh, Christianity. And mo m most of it is just wicked, criminal dominancy. And the church is used as an instrument of deception. The people behind it aren't Christian, they're not even Catholic. The same people behind Mormon uh, Mormonism aren't Mormons. There's something else. The people behind Freemasonry or the organisers of it aren't Freemasons. The, these are set up to give life to other Freemasons. The Catholic Church was set up to net in Christians to put to have the authority from behind the behind the setup so you can access it influence the body and then remove yourself from it so you wouldn't consider yourself a, a, a Jesuit general you'd consider yourself something else you'd just use that as a face or you would use that as a mask this is about the power the lies the mammon the devil and the organizations behind it and the influence that plays out on every individual which is completely completely uh, independent and unique and impossible to even comprehend but i believe a lot a lot a lot in um a lot in religion's got like two arms it's got a believing arm and it's got a where the nest where the evil nests where is it where is it it's exploited in in a more of a minority than a majority the majority is deception and is loyal to it but the chief component of the leadership is, is something behind it, running it, that isn't of the face of it, that doesn't share the same face. And you can see that quite clearly and evidently. So this verse is a future time when that will come to an end. And so I want to just give some thoughts about the, the man of sin and their champion. But obviously they're not they're expecting something else and the revelation of Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross and his judgments coming to fruit tells us a completely another story what's going to happen to you, that that system we can't we we can't see all the events but we can we we have this very important component of prophecy of which it will happen this everything here is this is not this is a sealed book this is the Lord's not going back on this this is like what will happen this is not like oh I've, the Lord will repent the Lord will chat, slow hold back this if nations repent the Lord will stall this eventuality he could spread it out and it could ebb and flow it could even he could bring it nearer he could let it's all dependent on each individual choice on in each individual moment and while there's born again christians on the earth praying for the lord's word in, in what the lord's asked them to do he will intercede because he's faithful and like he said to abraham you know abraham asking the lord all the way through you know if there's only one in there he wouldn't destroy it would you destroy it lord and and the Lord showed him the answer. It's tender mercy that no, He removed that one, and destroyed the lot. And this is what we're looking at in the revelation of Jesus Christ in verse um, uh, four and five. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, "Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partaker of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities." 
reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she sh she hath filled to her double how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart i sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and shall she be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judge her. So the people who are of these systems won't see that. They won't look in the Bible and go, oh, that's us, look, look we better repent. No. So what do they believe? So there's a question to consider. Well, what do they believe? And do they all believe the same thing? Do they know what they believe? Because the motive behind it is a lie. The motive of the Roman Catholic Church was to destroy, destroy Christianity, because that's where I believe the it was done on behalf of the Jews, whether it was done by the, the good-hearted Jews, and those good-hearted branches and that uh, are in Israel today, I think there's so much mix that no one really knows. So I'm not going to, I'm not anti, I'm not, an, I'm not prejudiced against any race, colour, creed. I'm about loving all men you know being thankful for all men i'm not perfect doesn't mean i like all men and like all behavior but i, I i've received the the love of god so i i'll extend that how i've been is it's been extended to me because i wasn't worthy for it so my outreach is is for all concerned because i know the lord's where the lord's heart is it's for his enemies as well as the people that are downtrodden by these enemies he doesn't. He, he doesn't accept these, this behaviour. He doesn't condone this behaviour. He will judge it. He has judged it, and it will hang itself. And I think this is a compromise in the conspiracy that will be revealed, and the judgment is simply the uh, man of sin. And the man of sin, I believe, will be one of them. Here be a Jesuit. Here be like that. Here be of that kind of that family. And they, they, they're looking out for him as their hero, but I, I think the judgment comes. He, it's clear, we have met so many scriptures that the, that the man of sin won't even consider his, his fathers and what they worshipped. So what, or, of his own seed. So there's two elements there that that could be, uh, the faithful of that seed and also the apostate of that seed, because that would be if he's if he has uh, the seed of Israel as well as other seeds in him, other, he, he could be a hybrid. And I believe he is a hybrid. And I believe he have many relations in from, you know, all components. I think that would be part of his inheritance. But I don't know, um, I'm just uh, speculating. And he will uh, be after his own glory, and that's how... Satan will overtake him and utilize him. So Satan will be instead of Christ. He'll be a type of shadow type of Christ. But he'll be Satan in man. He won't be the Holy Spirit in love. He will be loathing and hatred and anger. And he'll be a fierce judge. And all these Jesuits will realize that their man. All the world leaders who've been waiting for their saviour will realise that they're mad. All the Islamists, all the world religions, spiritualists, will be deceived by their man. At first, they love him. But then they come to realise, because he, they realise that he's not out for them, or anyone, he's out for himself. And he's Satan. And he's the judge. He's a, he's a, He's the Dan, he's the Danite judge that's come out alone without for God, in service to God solely as the judge. It's the devil. And the devil is going to execute inner jealousy for God against these people. And Satan is going to just destroy every single wickedness and behaviour. And he'll do that by guile. He'll walk in peacefully, and I believe personally that he did it by the word of God uh, and the world, all the world's hypocrisy, he will call it out 
and and when he will take the world lawfully and he will take power peacefully through deception and guile and he will creep in and he'll overturn them all then he'll take up seat he'll destroy the catholic church he'll execute and burn all the jesuits he'll reveal all the truth about the jewish behavior he'll bring law and order round the world and they won't they won't know what they won't know what hit them because all these satanic worshippers won't be getting what they they'll be getting what they wanted for, to start with but but their judgment will be joining his dis, his delusion his this man's grandeur and satan in in this man will just use that man to lead them into a, a, a god will allow them to be deceived to be led into a, a trap and it will reveal all their works in one go and it will be too late and they will all be judged. And then that will be that will be the man of sin. He will judge them all. He won't be their saviour, he won't be their hero. He will, he will release his true colours eventually. And he'll go after all the, all the everything, everything in Islam, organised religion, and he 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 want he he want to restore, in the name of he will re want want to restore peace and and uh, but he will he will have to do it by might, and he'll be angry because he'll have to go after all the unlawfulness and bring it down, and that's what his job will be to bring unlawfulness down. And he might not even be a powerful man. He might lead people into doing that. We don't really know. We only have what we have, what the Lord's revealed in the Holy Scriptures. Right, let's go back to Proverbs. The wicked work of a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. So I wanted to include that scripture. Right, let's turn to Matthew 7. A good tree bring, cannot bring forth evil fruit. Let's start at 13. Enter you the straight gate, and wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go thereat. So there's a contrast. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Beware of those religious Christians who come dressed up in religious garb, in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are cr uh, criminals and murderers. They're ravening wolves. They tear you to shreds. They murder your family. They're deviant. They're bloodthirsty. They're power hungry. And they're liars. And they do all that they can. They pull all stops out. If they could. And they will work and weave. And devour people. And they'll raise people up as the same. And that's how you can't trace the conspiracy. It's an ambiguous lump of human behaviour and Satan has power through that that um, influence you shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles every, even, even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit so you've got to look at it on the whole not on the individuals you can't say oh the Catholic Church did a lot of good works that, that's not a, a mark of its motive you have to look at the overall. The overall fruit is it robs people of the truth. It lies. It's unlawful. And it murders people to get power. 
and control and it steers people crudely and threatens people to the left or to the right it tries to steer its own way because it wants dominion it teaches dominion it teaches surrender but it won't tell you openly to your face it will just go about its business and lie and and omit the truth a good tree bringing forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit so a good Christian church wouldn't murder people, would it? Neither can a corrupt tree for bring forth good good fruit. So, mur so murdering people isn't good, is it? It's not good fruit to bring about a good cause. Two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, that's a lie. That's not unlawful. Um, you wouldn't get that through a court of law. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Why would you want it? Why would you want something that... Why would you... Every time you ate a fruit, it give you a stomachache or give you a pain. You, would you want that tree in your garden? Or if it, or in your vineyard or in your orchard? If, if you were relying on it for profit, would you want, want to grow, wait, take up room? You might want to keep it if it was a ornamental but you wouldn't want to eat the fruit wherefore by their fruits you shall know them not everyone that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven so the lord's saying there not everyone that's, that believes in me because because the devils don't go lord lord the lord's not speaking of everyone before the Lord's speaking at the end when people have had the opportunity. He's speaking in the now of, of, of all things and the outcome in the present. And he's, he's prophesying, saying, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, 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 shall enter. So everyone would be calling the Lord at that point. Kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? So the name of the Lord is Jesus Christ. So there's a lot of people in the name of Jesus Christ have prophesied in his name. They've used his name and they've prophesied. So they've read from his scriptures and given a testimony of, a, of the Lord's prophesy, prophecy. Anyone can read, uh, the devil could read the scriptures for the, and the scriptures remain true. And in thy name have cast out devils. Who's cast out devils? Who's got the uh, monopoly on the exorcism? And, and who's got monopoly on the Christian image of Hollywood? What What's portrayed as uh, Christianity on Hollywood and the media? Well, it's the Catholic Church, the powers, the dominant powers of religion. Hey, look at me, sticking his face in the way of Jesus. Like, oh, I'm the representation of Jesus. No, you're a crook and a devil. And when and everywhere you look, there's a whole pile of blood and dead bodies around you. How can you get continue to think you're going to get away with it that nobody sees? Everybody sees. So all those people that follow after this organised religion are going to say to the Lord in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and I've done many all these good works for the community, Lord. We put our hearts and souls into serving the church, serving our leaders like you told us, like the Bible told us, like our leaders told us, like the church leaders told us. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity is injustice. And if you're a part of a state religion or organised Christian clergy and body and jelly mould and yoke, you work iniquity and the Lord doesn't hear your prayers. And he said, you're, you're going to be cast out. He said back in Revelation 18, come out of her. Not then. He's talking about now, forever, and then. Anyone then at that point, in that top point in time, needs to get out. If you're in, it, in now, well, the same applies, doesn't it? You, if the bus is going over the cliff in 25 minutes and you're on it, right? You get off it now if you, if you hear it. If you hear Revelation chapter 18, 50 miles before the impact, 
You go, oh, look, I'm on the bus. I'll just stay on it for another 25 miles. No, you get off because you're going to be guilty. You and, and you tell other, you by you jumping off, someone say someone's jumped off the bus. What what do they know that I don't? If and you warn them, get off the bus. It's going over the cliff. It's, the Lord said so. And you jump off and warn them. They don't get off. That's their choice. But you, you would be resolved at their blood. Because you would have, you would have been saved, and the Lord would have paid 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 for your blood, and you'd have been forgiven. But their blood, well, the Lord's got that on his debit account. You know, he's in he's due. And they either receive him, or they'll be going over the bus over the cliff in the bus, and that's what the world's um, yoked to. Um, And that's my testimony of organised church religion, or all the churches together. They're all in bed with local community groups. And then you go to them with a real crime again of that community. They would be loyal to their religion and their church leadership and they'll look through what, what you're complaining and it doesn't exist. Because they're blind, they've got beams in their eyes, blinkers and beams. Two beams that make up a pair of shades. They've got um, reeds in their ears, and they are leaving, and they walk all over people. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound. This is the Lord speaking of the future. From, from his ministry right up until all the way through and to see iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved so that's talking of the tribulation if you're in that period and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come When therefore shall you see the abomination of desolation. So this is the great tribulation. So this is once the church has been raptured. So the Lord's speaking of it to his people Israel all the way through to the end. And he's saying, look, this is what you're going to be. This is what's coming. to be false prophets like there is today. You know, that's on the end of this. So it's the same bus. But we're looking in the period where it's gone over the trap. It shot the red light. Oh no, you should have got off there and stopped. You've just gone over a stop line and you're colliding for an impact. It's too late now, you've broke the... You, the that's, that's a prosecution offence. If you, There's no excuse for pulling out without stopping. It's not a give way, it's a stop. It's not a, oh, let's have a look. Someone's put that line there, so you stop. So that you've got to look. You've got to look every way and always. And and then you go that's what the stop line was for it's not oh to you know slow down your speed so you don't have to put the brakes on or come to a stop you can you know put the brakes on but you don't have to you you give way so if it's clear you can see all around you it's clear you just carry on going you you, you don't have to stop you, it's a bend or it's just or whatever it is but no when therefore shall you see the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet, so this is the and the man of sin entering into the temple, stand in the holy place, Whos whosoever readeth, let him understand. And let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. So this, the Lord's talking to his people at that point. Then let them which be in Judea, in Israel, in Jerusalem, flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the house top not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are a child and, and them that give suck in those days. Because they're going to they're, they're have trouble running away. But pray ye that ye flight not be in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day will be full of people, be festivals, probably restrictions, and it'll be a different, different, a different environment to navigate. And winter would be dangerous, slippery, and... You stand out like a sore farm if it's snowing. 
For then shall be great tribulation, such as there were not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. So this is the this is the final judgment. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And if any man say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if he shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. And that applies to any time from the Lord Jesus' uh, at first advent, or 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 even his second his second advent, because he went up to heaven and come back down to appear to the apostles. But his first ministry, his first advent into 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 uh, our lives or into the human race's lives, um, it does it applies. But but the the uh, the uh, focus is on that time specifically in this chapter. But it does apply. All all those false prophets all apply up until that point into that point wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in the desert go not forth behold he is in the secret chambers believe it not if he says it's this church it's that church believe it not believe the bible trust the word of god and trust the lord for as, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth out of the west so shall be the coming of the son of man be so at that point it's going to be very short very quickly after that event and the Lord says get ready <coughs> and flee if you're on the housetop run don't don't stop just run go without hesitation run that's the warning will people be preparing for that I wonder for whosoever the carcass is that's where the eagles should gather together so wherever everyone runs because they'll all be expecting where to run to that's where they be gathered. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give it a light. The stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, of power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trump, hail him before him, I wonder. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn the parable of the fig tree, when the branch is yet tender, put it forth leaves, yet know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know ye that it is near, even at the doors. And here we are. Though I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall not pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But that day and hour no man know. Not the angels of heaven, but my father only. That is in the days of Noah, so, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. I knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be girding at the, grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if, if the good man of the house had known in what what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready, for as much as he are, as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the Lord hath made ruler over the household, to give them meat in due season, blesses that servant, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find it so doing. Very I say unto you, that, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods, but it is, if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord, the life is coming, shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkard. The Lord of that servant shall come in the day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. Shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, I've just paused to look up a scripture, the Proverbs, 
which I missed, I marked down wrong, it was actually um, Proverbs 29, so back to Proverbs. Twenty-nine, one. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Now I came across that in my studies the other day, and I'd never, I'd never read that. Well, I read it, but it just wasn't one of the times to. have that meaty effect as it it did on, in this what I was focusing on in my studies which was um, ecumenism which was churches considering in my own work and in the Christian body today and all believers how we've we've all been born into a apostate nation and uh, we've all been whipped we've all been punched we've all been barged and you know, he he's without sin. Or the like Paul said, judge yourself. Measure yourself. Um that's the trouble with organised religion and false teachings and spies. Um for the A for the new member, for the young believer, the weak and sickly believer, particularly it's uh how do you how how do you get how do you teach that to somebody in a in a, in a mouthful, in one bite, it's something you have to pass through. That I think that's the wisdom. Uh, but that doesn't d resolve the dissolve the responsibility of what should have been taught and what should have remained, and would would have been more consistent if it wasn't for the apostasy. But the apostasy, the apostasy is. So we all come. Um, all believers can come with baggage. Even teachers can make mistakes. Uh, uh, elders f sin. All people have weaknesses. Um, but we we walk in the spirit. We live to the Lord. We confess our sins, and the Lord corrects our steps and guides us when we when we've appropriated atonement. Now, one of the things against in organised religion and spies is is your salvation, is your eternal security, is the reliability of the of your, your testimony of the Holy Word, the King James Bible, or or just your testimony of God and the Word, and particularly if you've got a testimony of the King James Bible, and that that's your standard witness, that's your standard uh, Bible. That's the for me personally, that's my only Bible. Um, I, I might have two or three of them, but um, to to you know have one one part open one page and another part open another page, and if I need the third part because the trouble weaknesses I have, I turn the page and I forget what I was doing. If I stop what I'm thinking, or halfway through conversations, I forget what I was talking about because my attention just uh, become dissociates becomes. Uh, absent and um, the Christian teachings against the, the the your your salvation and your all this you need to do all that and the Cracker Jack putting up if you if you if you ever seen Cracker Jack program in the seventies at the end of the show <laughs> all the children would answer questions if they got a question right they'd win prizes and had to hold their prizes and what and every every time they won a prize, the stack got higher and higher and higher. Then it reached their eye level. Then it was above their head. And then what they could um, get off the what they could carry off the stage without dropping, they could keep it. Or the, those standing that hadn't dropped their presence would keep them. Something like that. It was a just a quiz show. Children's uh, leaving. You know, uh, a bit of bit of fun after school entertainment bit of um eye candy and brain candy when you come home from it being uh cram packed with um loads of information from the education system 
and uh, your things things rub off on you and uh, crackerjacks like organised religion it stacks all these these um, do this do that you must do this you must do that and and that will affect your your walk and one of the biggest problems I, I suppose I that was what was what I had was my eternal security knowing that I was saved and uh, that took that that came with time that was always there by the Holy Spirit but it was having the knowledge of the Holy Word if somebody kicks your testimony of the word the reliability of the faithfulness of the word well where are you going to go for your nourishment you've got to rely on the flesh you've got to rely on this teacher that teacher it's crackerjack and you'll be one of those components standing on the box and you'll be following your leaders and they'll be stacking this on you stacking that on you and you'll be uh, doing all the all the work they'll be having all the fun and you won't be able to see past your face because you'll have all these conditions and laundry lists to complete and the Lord uh, there's all this um, you just consider a few scriptures uh, the Lord said be holy um, and he said we're all sinners and he said we we won't put on, on incorruption in the body, in the flesh until the resurrection so we've only had an endowment spiritually of his completeness but we're sinners and we remain sinners and the Lord said just to believe to pick up your cross daily so if you confess your sins every day and believe, you're holy. I'm holy, Lord, because you said so, I believe. I pick up my cross, Father, thank you. I, I am, I'm grateful for my salvation. I, am, I have your holiness because you've forgiven me of all my sins, past, present and future. You've taught me to pick up my salvation daily. And that's the simplicity of the Gospel. You get to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 so I'm very grateful for my brothers who've taught me from their experience and from the word about these issues about these um, teachings of the scriptures and then to let, and to build on what the Lord's taught me from my my walk and my experience and then just to, I've always sought how to put things in a nutshell for people just to share it, but first I had to be put in a nutshell myself. Right, let's read Corinthians 10. Right, um, first of all, uh, chapter 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptised unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock, that that followed them, and that rock was Christ, and that's the rock that uh, the the Lord has placed that the Father has placed us upon through the, the grace and merit of His Son Jesus Christ, and we are on that rock. We didn't get on that rock; He placed us on that rock. Right, let's look at Second Corinthians eleven. Uh, Oh well, no, it is First Corinthians 11, I think. Right, verse 27. Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body of and blood of the Lord. So this, I think, this used to trip me up always because I was in unbelief and I particularly used to come across this verse and question my salvation and question my and, and, and that robbed me from it just simply examining my standing on a day to day on a week to week basis but let, let a man examine himself and so let him eat and drink of that bread and drink of that cup so here we go we come to this remembrance which we are it's a commandment to to break bread and remember the lord's body and his sacrifice his blood and the shedding of his blood the breaking of his 
his body, his, the tearing of his, his stripes and the empty cross until he, his faithful return. That, that's remembrance. That's, and then gathering together, not, not as like a, a social, but gathering to a set apart um, ordinance, if you like, a set apart um, token, set apart commandment that the Lord said we to, to come to the tra traffic lights, the stop sign, regularly, you know, that, and that's down to individual, when you worship, how often you do it, I personally believe the scriptures, you know, we, we have our liberty, but uh, traditionally, this is one tradition I, I, I do commend and hold to, possibly the only one it was to discover that the how the local early church you know and that, that's very diverse when you study it when you learn about all the diverse units and little bodies and pockets of churches and house churches the synagogue churches and then peter's you know met in his his, his mum's house and so everybody was dotted all over the place and then then there'd be possibly, uh, you know, the elders would minister, the, the apostles would keep sheep, they were the shepherds, so they would minister to all these bodies because they were the, that was their fruit, so they know where they are. So they would minister to the, the root, the core, the, the trunk of those pockets, and, and Paul was to um, keep all apostasy out and build up build up the church till it brought all to the fullness of, of what Paul had been brought to and so he, the tradition was to the early church met on a Sunday not a Sabbath not it's not Sabbath keeping it's it's just the day after the Jewish Sabbath day and they would meet on a Sunday and they would break bread in remembrance of the Lord it was um a time where you just solely come in, you know, like you do when you first come to the Lord, when you first call upon the Lord in humility. You examine yourself. So the Lord's saying, when you come to do this, break bread, make sure you are first. Uh, Hebrews 4, make sure you've entered into that rest. Make sure you are saved, that all your sins are forgiven. So you're not just taking the Lord in vain you're not remembering the Lord and, you, and you're not even saved or you're, you've not really believed you've not received his salvation and his his uh, redemption by the power of his holy blood so you're you're walking and tripping you're going to trip up over the Lord and you're you're not going to see the beauty of the simplicity of of the ordinance of the commandment so to, to some it would look like skipping through a daisy chain and a joy and a blessing and others it will be running through a guillotine and it, it will trip them up and chop them to pieces because it's just the Lord reminding, Paul's reminding the believer well make, first make sure you're, you're a believer, you're, you're one of Christ and secondly don't take it lightly Make sure you go back to that first love, that first point where you believed. And confess your sins. And take up your cross. And break the bread. And that's the simplicity of that scripture. And the gospel, and that's what religion robs you of. That's what all false teachers rob you of. That's what the devil will sift you from. That beautiful simplicity. And, and that's how how do you teach that how do you give that in one instant you have the lord the lord um has given us a, he's done that already so we have to contend in service for these areas and this is one of the, one of the areas i i feel um compelled because i i care i'm concerned uh, I I'm concerned for all these people. I don't want anyone to go to hell. I don't want any of these religions to be deceived. And I could look at all the pros and cons why what why I should, you know, on my own. I could honestly say I couldn't be bothered. 
but I'm not on my own. I have a testimony of the love of Jesus Christ, and I know that he is outstretched to all of these people. So this is an area. All, all the members, all the all the laity, all the all even all the evil, wicked men behind it, whatever their motive, whatever their individual belief, whatever their loyalty. Is it is it the truth? So just to invite those, to, but let an, a man examine himself. And in this context, breaking the Lord's bread in remembrance, let him examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. He's welcome. So let him. It's it, it's what it's there for. It's pro it's. Be <coughs> been provided for every single man woman and child right let's go back to the let's go back to mark we'll go to mark For false Christ and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take heed, behold, I have foretold you all, all things. Again, that's talking of the um, last days, the end times, the end part, the last part, the great tribulation. <laughs> but there'll be false, you know, like we have false, we've had false Christ before, and then if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, there is Christ, or this is Christ's true, true church, you know, all the religions claim, Mormons claim to be the, the hold to the true church, that's their belief, that they're the true church, so therefore everything else is false. Mormons believe that every other Christian is a devil and they're possessed by the devil. That's what the, that's the lie that they te keep these people yoked, yoked by, that they've got the truth, nobody else. And yet the holy word which they hold to and, and claim to believe and represent for false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect, even those that are saved. Get seduced if it were possible, and it's possible temporarily. It's possible temporarily to be killed and fall out of fellowship, and and the Lord uh, take you away and destroy you, burn you. But you wouldn't lose your salvation. You would uh, lose your, your the favour you had, the blessing of the good. You, you wouldn't be in the good book, the good books of the Lord. <laughs> But there'll be false Christs like there are today, false teachers, false churches, and false gospels. And the Lord's warned. He he's he keeps warning. He, he like like the uh, proverb said, if you how many times are you corrected, you just become hard. Then what? What do you do? That what once the pot, the clay set. What did the Lord say about the clay setting? Once it's set, you want to be pliable. You want to be turned into an iron bar, not a, a clay pot to be smashed by the truth, by the rod, by that which proceeds out of the, work, the mouth of God, the word of God. And they were all amazed. They glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things this day. I got the wrong scripture. Six. Beatitudes. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to false prophets. Now you you tell me which you name all the Christian churches, all the ecumenical churches together, the Catholics and Mormons. Speaking all well of each other, they all can't you know, it's all good, it's all positive, let's all be friends, let's all live in peace. Yeah, let's all live in peace, but let's do it sincerely and honestly, without forsaking the truth and the law, let's just not kid ourselves. 
Uh, of course, we live in a lost, fallen world with liars, run by mammon, run by corruption, run by motives that are insincere, disingenuine. Even the people in them don't know that they're insincere. They really believe them because they're deluded. Like we all get deluded in in our natures if we allow let them go wild. Look at a wild forest. It choke a choke all the life in it, and it'll die. And it becomes starved and sickly, and it starts to become diseased, and eventually it'll die. That's why you need to manage it. That's why you need to weed and prune and look after things. Let the light in, let the air in, let the oxygen in the soil. Let the plant breathe. And let the uh, distribution of nutrients and be um, evenly dis dispersed, dispensed. That the uh, plant can receive all its nutrients. But not in the world. They don't point, they don't point out full. They don't point out uh, Islam's wrong. Uh, Islam doesn't talk out against the Catholic Church. You know, Islamists don't speak out against Christians and Jews. That their Bible teaches to kill them, stone them to death behind the rock, and lie and undermine uh, the, the uh, that that independent lawful nation with their surrender to Allah. Or otherwise, you're you're worse than, than an unbelieving Islamist and you're going to die if you don't bow down to the leadership of those men, of those orders, those false prophets, those liars, those robbers of your souls that Paul robbed all wages to do you a service, to do me a service, to do everybody a service, to do Christ a service. To serve Christ for all men, towards all men, for himself, for his salvation, for his glory and namesake. Not for our sake, not for our um, our titillation, solely for our lives. No, our lives are for him. And he's, he's given us that wonderful liberty and freedom of expression that we can be free in him and live independent lives within his will, within his law within that law love thy neighbour as thyself because we live in an evil world we it's not it's not recognised by that evil because that evil is blind to itself, it's hardened in its heart and um, that's what it reminds us my mum used to say to me if you keep pulling that face at me the wind will change, you'll stay like that forever and there's wisdom in that, that expression, that common old, that saying. Beware of dogs, because of evil workers. This is Philippians 3. Finally, uh, chapter 1, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous. But for you it is safe. <clears throat> so Paul repeating all what he'd learned, all his testimony unfolding to every church body, every group, uh, directed at their ind individual needs, but the same message within that need. So we're getting the same gospel. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, in indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. It's for your benefits, for your safe well-being for Paul he suffered it but it wasn't grievous beware of dogs beware of evil workers not beware of the animal dogs but beware of those people who behave like dogs packs pack, pack animals one's dominant all the others are alf beaters they got no independence they can't think for themselves that they, they they're a pack and they follow the the dog there's only one dog, all the others are dogs. Beware of dogs following Satan. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. What's the concision? Well, concision is a, a pack, is an organisation, is a, a laity, is a system of iniquity. Beware of those who take part in Freemasonry, 
organised religion, councils, leadership positions, all of those um, iniquitous belief systems modelled on the world world's philosophies, philosophies of men, not of the holy word, not of the brethren, not of the not of the unleavened, for of not of the circumcision, for we are the circumcision, circumcised, see, we're removed which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We have no confidence in the world. Why? Because we've, we've, we've tasted Jesus, tasted the fruit. We don't need, uh, what else? We don't need anything else. We've got everything. Our fools, our everything's supplied for us. Heavenly Father's provided all things, knows all things. The Lord has told us that all things are before us, before him. And there's not 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 one hair on our head that will it's not numbered, and he cares for us, he cares for our needs, he cares for our well being I mean he cares ultimately for what's best for us, even when we're doing the worst things his his care doesn't diminish his care is uh consistent he's uh tender tender loving, merciful, outstretched, kind, patient. His ways are higher than our ways. We always think the worst. He always, he's consistently loving. He's consistently peaceful and, 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 and perfect and holy and just and right. Second Peter. But there were false prophets also among that people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, privately, privily will sneak in. Uh, with privately, seem that means that the motive <coughs> has been planned, and they've privily brought that motive in. Who privily shall bring in damnable her heresies? So they're not just brought in randomly, they're privily, privately, in secret, from a secret craft, spies, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. So any private body claiming to be a teacher of, of, of the gospel has privately brought in a damnable heresy, if, it's, if it is indeed a heresy, and they're teaching another gospel or a works gospel or any teaching of it is against the trinity against your salvation the simplicity of christ the we're saved by grace alone through faith alone and we trust in the merit and grace and holy spirit and god's word alone for the uh, public not for the private interpretation for the individual public private public stroke private interpretation for the public body the public world, the public creation, that the Lord is seeing openly in the light, that it's for them, it's for all. But privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So there we go. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil or spoken of, and through covetous shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now is a long time lingereth not, and their, da their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels of sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eight person, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So it's all these Christian bodies are deliberately deceptive, and all that pick it up and follow it are taking upon and serving the devil 
and they're antichrist. They're instead of Christ. They're another gospel. They're another Jesus. And they are all condemned by the Holy Word of God. But yet they claim to believe it, but they don't know it because they haven't received it. Therefore they just use it. Lord, haven't we cast out devils? Haven't we prophesied? Prophecy is the Holy Word, the testimony of Jesus Christ. The prophecy is in this book. There's no more prophecy. There's no less prophecy. There's one prophecy, and that's Jesus Christ. And we have his preserved prophecy in every book. The book of Revelation is his complete prophecy. Each individual book is there. Each individual's testimony is a complete prophecy in that one person towards all the persons. Like Timothy was a letter to Timothy regarding his personal salvation and walk. So he, even, even the Lord included um, all diverse uh, people in, the, in these books. And he, each character had a completeness and a prophecy as in the um, Old Testament, but in the New Testament, each had a had a fullness, had received the fullness in their walks, and they're each given their accounts, and then towards all all people, towards the same end and testimony, the prophecy realised in those people. The Lord said, "You must be born again." Now, if these people are, are prophesying in the Lord's name, if they're reading the scriptures and and blessing uh, dead people and uh, burial sites and blessing weddings, prophesying in the Lord's name, using the, taking the name of the Lord in vain, not fearing, hardening their hearts against his word, giving the gospel a bad name to the world. Nobody wants to do anything to do with Christianity. It's a stink to them. It's an insult because it's abused. It's abused by these deliberate enemies who privately plant these seeds into the Christian body and they undermine that which threatens them the most. That's the holy word of God and the, the lawful right of it, preserving the nation's independence. That's number one. Number two is the people who hold to that and they are born again, they have eternal security and they believe in there's no salvation other than jesus christ alone and faith alone in him that threats every religion that paul robbed all their wages so i am on behalf of the lord jesus christ in paul's ministry robbing these churches of their wages because that christ has already robbed them and that's all i can repeat it's like jude says contempt for the faith as it's first preached First John four one, believe, beloved, believe, beloved, as believers, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because there are many, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So, these churches, you never hear them speak of false prophets or false teachers, because they're all all of the same thing. They're all mammon. They're all of the world. They're all leaven. They're all liars and deceived, and they can't see it. <coughs> they can't. They won't recognise it. That their heart stiff-necked, hardened hearts in unbelief, and the Lord has condemned them. He's judged them, and they're, they're going to stay like that. They're going to remain, and they're going to be burnt in the fire. And I certainly don't wish that for him. And I know. And, I'm, and the Lord didn't, because he died. He's the only one who died on the cross to prevent it. So what more could the Lord have done? Okay. Oh, it's second Tim three, three. 8 to 17. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, now consider what Paul went through in, in Acts, where he had people resist, resist him also. So I just wanted to throw that, throw that in the consideration. 
withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds. Corrupt minds means that their belief's been twisted because they're holding to some other half-truth or other truth that corrupts their minds. Reprobate concerning the faith, concerning the gospel, they're wild and way off course. They are reprobate uh, concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was, as those two were, Janus and Jambres. And so these men will come to nothing, they're full. Now their folly is before believers in Christ, but all men, so the whole world's going to see their folly, going to see their fall, going to see their shame, and, and, and they'll have nowhere to put their face. But, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, He's, the Lord's talking to believers, but thou hast fully known, thou has, thou hast, thou, that you have, you have got it, you fully know my doctrine, manner of purpose, because it's sure and faithful, Christ is sure and faithful. Man of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, um, which came unto me at Antinoch, at, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly, Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil, ma evil men and seducers, seducers of, of promises, seducers of good ideas, seducers of kindness, seducers of all these seducing things, shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. Because you've got to be deceived to deceive somebody else. Because if you've got the truth, you wouldn't deceive somebody, so you wouldn't be deceived, or be deceiving. So deceiving and being deceived, deceived and deceiving. <laughs> but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. So this is Timothy, so Timothy knew the, 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 the word of God, the doctrine, the Holy Bible, from his youth. Everyone today in the world has had a knowledge of the Holy Scriptures down the library, at school, in churches. Ev since they're a child, there's no excuse. No, no one can say, oh, I didn't know where there was a Bible. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know of Jesus Christ. I didn't know of God, I didn't know of the beauty of creation I didn't know of my breath I didn't know of life I was dead how can I how can I have believed when I was dead and the Lord uh, no one will be without excuse because of the what, preaching of the word the saints creation their conscience and that from a child that has known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So through faith you're made wise and you're saved in Christ Jesus. All scripture, let me say, <clears throat> let me say that again, all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So again, redundancy of organised religion and uh, Christianity, <laughs> as it's known, as it's seen by the world, but not as it's taught in the gospel, not as it truly is in the believer, the minority, the believe, the persecuted, the kicked out of the synagogues, the poor, the weak, the feeble, the dross, the hated, the despised, the beloved, the beloved in Christ, the beloved uh, child of God, because the Lord sees 
I think the father only sees his, his son and those uh, see those children believing and receiving his son. So they're beloved. Sinful or not, they're beloved. They are like the seed of Israel, they're beloved. They remain in the Lord's heart, mind and will to be grafted back in to, to Abraham, to their fathers in Christ in uh, through the uh, finished work of Jesus Christ. Right, Galatians 4. One two. Now I say that uh, an heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But his tutor, so let's read that again. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, so Jesus was the heir, and now we are received his heirship. We've been, he's, he's brought us into his heirship. As long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But it's under tutors, so we have people to teach us, and governors, we have people to in the world who um, run them powers, and fight, fight un law lawlessness, unlawfulness, supposedly. Uh, or there's always a, a part of the law fighting lawlessness it's just never adequate enough to outweigh the imbalance of unlawfulness in the government and out in the public body even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world now, obviously talking to the believer the saved redeemed believer in christ but when the fullness of the time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to re redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons so the lord the, the lord was born in the time when the seed of israel were born under to a woman born as born of a woman born of their their inheritance their mum which is israel which is the mothers within sarah mothers within that seed so referring to Israel as a woman, made under the law, so they're made under the covenant of the keeping the, the commandments and the ceremonial washing, cleansing of sins because of their unbelief. The law, right and wrong, do this and you, that won't happen. Do that, and that you'll be blessed. Do right, you'll be blessed. Do wrong, and the law will be after you. To redeem them that were under the law that he might receive the, the, the adoption of sons to deliver them, to remove them, to save them to set them free, to uncut them to unstitch them, to unmerge them to remove that tumour remove that genetic anomaly and restore that body to that perfect self in Christ to adopt them into belief into salvation in his grace because ye are sons because ye are sons god have sent forth the spirit of his son into that your hearts crying abba father wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of god through christ Howbeit then when ye knew not god ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods but now after that you have known god or rather are known a god how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labour in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. So there's a lot, uh, Paul appealing, appealing to these people who've received grace, they've received the fullness and Paul's just resting in the fullness and restoring and preaching the fullness and saying look rest as you are be as I am be holy be believing trust in the Lord as I, I am for I am as ye are you are no different from me I'm a servant of all he's just read that wonderful blessing you are lords 
you are considered a, a lord in the Lord, and not not a servant, but as an heir, a child, a son, Lord of all, though He be Lord of all. So we we have an inheritance with the Lord of all. Now I say that the heir. So who's the heir? So that's, uh, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. So you, diff, no different for a servant, though you are be lord of all. You serve all, lord of all. So you're you're as Christ was justified, and he's the sole heir. But he's under tutors and governors. So there's a, there's a promise for the believer. There's a continuation. You still need looking after, and we still we still we're living in a world, and we, and we still need governors in the church. Still need leaders in the church, until we know how to run wild, or run or be free, to act and think lawfully for ourselves in in an eternal, in eternal life. What what the Lord has for for our our futures. Right, I'll have a pause and come back. Right, continuing my outreach, uh, my video outreach to the um, ecumenical movement, or hopefully I've so far contributed something to the body or any any believer who who needs perhaps a. Uh, some some nourishment or some seeking answers or or just uh, you know seeking to learn and grow and I hope it reaches um, any 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 ecumenical member any any Christian any anyone who considers themselves a believer who hold, who believes in Jesus but is perhaps serving one of these systems I hope I've conveyed simply. Uh, the of what the word of God says and the contrast between the fruits of of the teachings of the word and and what is evident by the observations of the world and how as a believer I can see that's uh, detrimental to the gospel. It's against the gospel and it's anti Christ and it's it's anti law. It's anti the the truth, so it's um, I am opposed to everything about it. Although I my my concern is for every individual who's been deceived by it. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't I be? I would never take up arms or fight for for Christ. I would. It's uh, not the gospel. It's not the way. Jesus laid down his life. He's mercifully. We're, live, we're we're not living in a time of judgment. We're under judgment. The world's under judgment. If you're not saved, the world's under the judgment that the Lord is currently overextending, out extending, extending His mercy to these wicked priests, these wicked concision, these wicked Jews, these wicked Gentiles, these wicked. Wicked means unbelief. Those who, who are practicing holding to what they claim to be their God is not the God of Abraham, Isaac or Jacob. It's not the God of the Bible. It's not the God of creation. It's not the sole God. It's not the truth. It's not the word. It's not the way. And although this is only a virtual video outreach, I hope and pray this this contributes towards all outreaches to the love and mercy of Jesus Christ in the world to all these contributes all the ministries all the all the children all the Christians that uh, witness Jesus Christ in in their lives on any level um I pray that this goes some way towards that and also my own um Fortunately, I can um, get out and post gospel tracts and hopefully continue, God willing, to uh, share the gospel on the street and on 
continue making uh, these videos and sharing my testimony, so uh, building up my 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 faith and um, building up my testimony to share with the world and be more effective to not so not not so so sparingly to grow in and continue to um, increase, you know, to continue to improve, continue to abound and continue to experience those uh, wonderful blessings. That's not easy for me. Yesterday I um, was give it I, I I was suffering just just nat just symptoms I can't avoid, but they will come. And it's like when if you you consider the Old Testament when an animal was abused, it was put to death. When a woman committed adultery, it, the Lord had to get it out because because once you allow that in, it sounds it, it seems really harsh and wicked, but it's it was the right thing. If you if you know the Lord and know holy the standard of holiness, and the damage that does to any nation, any family, any society, that those things if you don't get rid of them, they will they will rot the whole lump. You know you don't look after your teeth. You know what you know what one bit of the cake you you the whole lot's starting to rot, and that's the world. That's sin, and that's why the Lord was so. That's what I said earlier, you know, the Lord left us a, an example of these things so we didn't repeat the mistake. we got the hindsight, don't need to do these things again and again and again. But yet the world does, and hence why the Lord will judge it. So, um, I hope I've um, contributed and... Uh, I can share those uh, uh, my testimony. So I'm gonna wh whiz through some more scriptures um, quickly to just to um, reinforce what I've already been conveying and what the words been uh, conveying. Let's go to First Thessalonians four. Furthermore, then we breath, beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you will abound more and more. For, for ye know what commandments ye, we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honour, not in the lust of con concupiscence, Concupiscent, concupiscence, concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we we also have forewarned you and testified. Don't rip off your brother, don't rob your brother, don't rob him of any his testimony of his esteem or his possessions or his glory or his blessing for God have not called us unto uncleanliness but unto holiness he therefore that despiseth despise not man but God who have also given unto us his Holy Spirit let's be careful about despising people despiseth not the man but God who have also given unto us his Holy Spirit, but as touching brotherly love, you need not let I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another, and indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we command ye, commanded you. So in a nutshell, the quite quite simply, simply, the gospel really is to be saved, to be born again, to grow, in, to be established, and then to become a disciple, to grow as a disciple, share the gospel, and come come to that full measure that that Paul was given and that the saints were granted and and given, 
and then and share that with others and we all come to that same level we've all been brought by grace to that same level on the first day we believed so we're sanctified in that every day of our lives so every morning we wake up we're, we're in that same sanctification if we're walking in f obedience and fellowship and we simply return, restore to fellowship by faith by by confessing our confessing our sins and being thankful and doing those tokens those rem to keep the Lord in remembrance to study to be a Berean take up our cross gird our loins and to share the gospel and contend for the faith and reprove all work, works of darkness but just to rest in that salvation on a daily basis it's really really quite simple but when you're struggling when you're weak when you haven't come to that that understanding and there's so much keeping you off that there's so many liars so many private opposition who are fearful of losing their own standing and these men are gonna are gonna come to judgment because christ has put it down he, he made an open show of all this priestcraft all this organized religion and they won't listen they dig their heels in they won't listen and they persecute you they quite happily turn a blind eye where their friends and their chums will do the dirty for them and they mix with murderers and this is why all the church systems get caught in paedophilia because it, the people they mix with set them up to do that and they're too stupid to recognise it because they won't point out false teachers they won't point out false Christ they won't point out lawbreakers because they're all mixed with them and they're compromised with these people so why would they speak out against them? because they're friends with them, that's why and they can't see it so they're not going to teach the gospel look at all the presidents of the world um, you know, whether they do right, whether they do wrong. Do they preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? No. So anyone claiming to be a Christian and, and on the world stage, a figurehead and on the world stage, it doesn't preach Christ, crucify, forgiveness of sins. He's a robber, he's a liar. Whether they are saved or not, they're still, they're still deceived. They're weak and sickly and or... They're a liar. They're using the name of the Lord. And the Lord doesn't know them. Because they're liars and robbers. Right, 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that I unruly comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but every. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So Christians are to love in towards all men, not to shun them because they don't agree with what they believe in. We're faithful to God. We're faithful to the truth. Not, not we don't, we don't waver or bend. The gospel doesn't waver or bend. We bend and we break, but the gospel doesn't. Our testimonies are sure, and and we can't. They can't be denied. And these um, these people are denying uh, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Oh. Uh, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if. If any work not, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Well, that wasn't the scripture I was thinking of. Never mind, right, I'm going to move on. Second Timothy... For to you know, there's the scriptures that apply to these religions, but that does the does the whole overall apply 
Um, right, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Keep evaluating yourself, keep walking, keep measuring, keep growing, and stay true and faithful. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. For I, I have fought a good fight, have finished my course, I have kept the faith. So Paul was already done, complete, from the, the, the time the Lord saved him. And he completed the work he had to do. And he's left it for all, all believers. Yet they... Um, They've turned to fables, they've got itchy ears, they go to these pastors, they go to these church groups, they're always looking for the next wave of um, soap opera, all the next novelty, all the next spirit, the saucy spirit to come along and lead them into a, rev a revival or a new, a new, a new fad or, or this or the other. Right... Uh, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able to sound by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. So to convince the gainsayers, they, those who are profitable by religion, they make merchandise of you, they get you into their turnstiles, you, they, you do all the community work, you pay all the... they get a revenue from your donations and they flourish. And we have the word of God, we have sound doctrine to exhort, to warn and to convince, to show them that, that they're unapproved by the word of God. And there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, especially they of the Jewish seed. Vain, vain talkers and deceivers, whose mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not so they're what are they teaching teaching little secrets how to make money how to cut corners hey look if you do do you know this you can get away with that if you keep your fingers crossed it don't 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 matter don't count if you if you join a masonry or is it things like that teaching things they ought not they're not teaching what they should be teaching so Whatever it is, they're teaching things they ought not to teach for filthy lucre's sake, for profit. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true, therefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. <clears throat> These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So we have the we have the commandment that we can um, the Berean, the believer, the disciple can rebuke. I have the holy word. We can correct with the scriptures, speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. We can give given permission from the head, from Paul, from Christ, from the Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Rebuke with all authority, let no man despise you. Do all things in love. How, if you do all things in love, meekly and honestly, like the Lord, he, he, he grew in, in, in the eyes of man and God. He grew, grew in favour. He, he was admired. He was admired by his enemies. Not, he wasn't always believed by his enemies, but they admired him. They, admired his, they couldn't deny his authority and his truth. His beauty and his his holiness, they were just so hard that they they rejected him. That's the simple truth, because he taught us the simple truth. Right, Hebrews.
But exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence, if we trust in the simplicity, if we hold it, hold fast, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast. So the beginning of our confidence, the fruit, when we were saved, when we first believed the joy, the love, the forgiveness, the mercy, the outpouring. For we may partake, for we we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning, we hold the beginning of our confidence, that that surety, that cross, steadfast. Um, not something I had the opportunity because I had I didn't have the nourishment, and I couldn't hold it steadfast because I didn't know how to. So now I know how to, because I've learned. I've been. I've learned the lessons. The Lord's led me through that pattern in my individual, personal salvation, and, and gave me that steadfast confidence. Because it's all been laid down, and it's all in other believers' lives for me to learn from, and for others to learn from, as it will be in all believers' lives to teach, to to, uh, to be a, a servant of the Lord and to be an example, and to be uh, the Lord to use those people in his graciousness. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. So looking at the contrast of organised religion, how that they don't believe, and they just become hard and hard, so they, they're never going to believe, their ears will be switched off, and they'll be blind, and it'll be yeah, 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 whatever, before you've even opened your mouth. Before I go to the social services and, and they're, they're, they're quizzing your authenticity that you've been lawfully signed and it's been authenticated, they're not, going, they're not inviting you there to authenticate whether you're, you're, you're telling the truth or not. They're inviting you there to find out if you're lying. That's their motive, so they're not interested in you in the first place because they're hard-hearted they're hard because they're dishonest. And they're, they're, they're not being open, so they, they invite you there on a pretense and they reveal the, mo the true motive. Like organised religion, they're hardening their hearts, they're withholding the gospel and they're teaching you a false religion. And they will perish in hell. They'll, go, they'll lead the whole world into hell. All those that follow it, they will go into hell with the world that follows alongside them. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of a needful... No. Dear beloved, when I gave all diligence... to write unto you of the common salvation common salvation so it's, it's common to everyone because it's free and it's, there's no respect for persons there's no respect for levels of sin Jesus died to save sinners so if you're a sinner Jesus died to save you it was needful for me that was Paul to write you and exhort you that you would earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before, before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So the apostasy, the, these men, these wicked evil men who are against the independence and freedom of individuals in the world and the salvation of souls are deliberately and willfully in the world contending against the truth, contending against not only the gospel, but everything under the goodness of the Lord's reign, his umbrella, Everything good in this world, everything right, everything loving, everything merciful, everything just, 
these are against it on purpose to undermine it. Their secret little armies, their conspiracy, their influence, their leading people into the world to ferment and make merchandise. And all these organised religions are not teaching, contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Faith alone, in Christ alone, trusting in his word, his preserved word alone. They're all against these things and liars. And there, there it is, they're condemned. And they're going to hell on a bus. And the Alpha Course is one of their, with, by, with one of their Antichrist agenters, Nicky Gumbel, possibly a Jesuit or Jesuit trained, Jesuit influenced, certainly one in that yoik, a merchandiser, a pleaser. Spreading out this um, ecumenical whore, come in, come in and join us, come in and go down to hell with us because we're liars and we're do getters and in the name of uh, Christ, but we yoke you to this iniquitous system with all these other poor deceived people who've been uh, deceived and robbed of the gospel, robbed of any nourishment, robbed of any truth reach in their ears because they've been starved and they've been pumped loads of um, North Sea oil down their gullets and it's got all in their wings and uh, they need need to come out, they need a bath, they need cleaning, they need washing, they need the precious blood and redemption of Christ, they need, they need to confess their sins and head for the door and not look back and run and seal that door up, not for others, but for, for that individual. Right, John 18, 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. It's not of world. It's not of mammon. It's not of power. It's not of systems. It's not of domination in the worldly sense. It's not of vanity. It's not of grandeur. It's not of elevation elevating one above another it's not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight they would pick up arms and and fight and hack it out until it, it won because that what would be the point if you're, you're in a fight you wouldn't you wouldn't be fighting to lose you'd be fighting to get get the uh get the victory but the lord the lord's servants don't fight because the victory's secure that i should not be delivered to the jews but now is my kingdom not from hence. So that scripture on its own, on its own, can be taken out of context. But in context to the believer, context to the gospel, it's not of this world. It's not of this earthly realm. It's a spiritual kingdom in Christ in heaven. My kingdom in my Father. My Father's kingdom has many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you so, said the Lord. So the Lord's kingdom is a heavenly kingdom, it's a spiritual kingdom. It's an eternal kingdom in eternity in heaven where Christ resides on the right hand of the Father in glory. Before he, before his appearing, before his return for his, his church and then his final absent, um, ascent into... Uh, the end, the victory to bring about the kingdom, the f God's kingdom on earth, the kingdom in heaven to come, the kingdom that is, has always been, and that is today, and that will be tomorrow on earth. Not not tomorrow, but in the future, in the end of the prophecy, in the complete realization of his judgment on the cross, putting all these Jesuits, putting all these ecumenical liars, all these false Jews, all these unbelieving Jews and taking them to that period and delivering any any that chooses not to bow down to the king of Babylon but will stand and believe and trust in, in, in Jesus Christ will, only, only those will be delivered and faithful and saved through that, that judgment and then they'll be brought into the kingdom before in that way through the king through the door that way 
but those who've entered the kingdom, the spiritual kingdom today, will not go through that judgment on the earth. They will pass through that judgment. They will pass through that with the Lord and they will return with the Lord in heaven and the Lord will return with all his saints. And uh, his kingdom is separate from the worldly kingdoms. Organised religion is not. Organised religion kills in the name of God. And it can't be disputed that that's not the truth. Now, an individual Christian making an error isn't necessarily a representation of what Christianity is. But when a whole organised body kills in the name of Christ, that's a serious error. Because that's speaking for every single individual that's a Christian. Whereas one individual Christian who makes a mistake or breaks the law, it's like th that's the fault of the individual, not Christianity. But when people start lawfully, privately saying that they're the mouthpieces of God, not only is it unlawful, be it's unchristian, it's undoctrinal, and it's antichrist, and it needs to be repented of. But it's not. <coughs> Let's go back to Proverbs. Read it again. <laughs> He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Let's do it one more time. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. Consider that scripture. The, wicked, the righteous is delivered out of trouble. So the church will be removed. And who's going to be placed in its stead? Quite a scary thought for the uh, wicked. So um, the righteous is delivered. <coughs> when you look at the world today, the good people are spat out and what 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 takes up its stead what 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 fills its place is someone who's prepared to compromise that that person's just conscientiously spoken out again and said i ain't doing this job this is dishonest this is unlawful i quit right that that quit happens in one day and then the next day a wicked person comes along someone who will compromise and takes up the seat a few days later Everyone's forgot that the righteous man has spoken out. The righteous woman says, I'm not doing that, it's bad. I'll have no part in it. And then the whole wicked people that follow that wicked in its stead do not notice that the whole world's wicked. That all that is, the Lord's removed, all that's good and all that remains is wicked, but that wickedness can't see it in itself because it's all blinded of the same lump. Let's go back to the simplicity of the gospel, which is anti these anti anti churches, anti these um, anti Christ gospels, anti Christ units, these anti Christ members, or these anti Christ principles and beliefs that are held to. And then the truth remains consistently throughout the gospel in every single book. Um, right, Luke 17, 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So you've got the world religions building up their kingdoms. They're not teaching the kingdom of God is within you. They're teaching you build the kingdom first and that I put it in you. Or they don't know what they're teaching, they're all just following somebody else who, who are deceived, deceiving others, being deceived. But they don't realise the kingdom, it, it, it's received the moment a believer believes. 
and they are brought into the kingdom and that kingdom remains in them wherever they are forever because they've believed in a, a probation the kingdom is in on earth in their heart but where the kingdom is is eternal in heaven they just have that eternity imputed into their heart through the merit and grace of Jesus Christ they've been born again but these religions don't teach that and it's all basic stuff and it's got to be taught it's got to be uh, reminded again as well as um, the gospel being preached the, what, what has been preached has got to be got to be taught unfortunately it doesn't need to be taught but it needs to be uh, re re-established what has been taught by the test the testimony of the person who is serving in that testimony of all that's how they grow and that's how they establish and approve themselves and that's how they um, show what's unapproved by the word uh, what do I want John Matthew Mark Luke John three. And it really, this is um, for my benefit. This is um, also for, for not only for service, but it's to serve me first. It's my the Lord working through me to share with other grace the grace the grace and working of God through my life. Three to seven. This is the Lord's. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, says Nicodemus. So the religious man. Let's go back a bit. Chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees. The Pharisees are two sects in the Jewish belief. There was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they had different variations of different beliefs. Some believed in the resurrection, some didn't, and so forth and so forth. There's a few variations in their belief, but they both held to Jehovah God and the the law. And the, but they were apostatized; they were corrupted by um, apostasy and sin, and they were they were a captive. They're at the tail end of another another captivity, and the the rest restoration of that captivity, and then the peak of that point where the Lord come and tore it all down and gave up his life and took it up again. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So the Lord's made it unequivocal, you must be born of the Spirit. Born of the water, born of the flesh is your your growth and your in your incubation and your conception and incubation in your mum in your mum, your mum and dad in the womb. The water is life, the flesh, the blood. That's your first life, that's your first birth. Your second birth is through the door, through Christ. You believe and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the baptism, the faithful promise of God's graciousness, God's victory on the cross, his death, burial and resurrection. And you receive that into your life and you're born again. You're born again through the one who opened the door for us to be born. The eternal Lord and creator opened the door by giving his life, taking it up that we could be born into the spirit, into the kingdom of, of, of heaven, in God the Father, in heaven, eternity. And, and Christ is the, the, the Lord, and the, on the right hand, the authority of the Father. He's the Father's word, 
and he's the only way to salvation and he's robbed all these religions he's robbed all these worldly powers and he's given all, all the truth freely that they may believe and receive eternal life that is the simplest fear of the gospel to receive a forgiveness of all their sins and live eternally in a, in a heavenly kingdom with the Lord and to faithfully wait until he returns and to share his gospel with the rest of the world and that's what these religions uh, rob you of and this is what they don't teach and it's evident you only you need the word you need to read the word you need to know what the word is you need to receive the word before you can realize what the word is not and if you if you if you got it wrong to start with you're going to lead everyone astray everyone that follows a, the head that's going wrong these religions that go wrong they're going to lead them astray simply and they don't teach the gospel. Have you ever heard any of the religions teach this? I tell you now, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. You don't, you don't hear these community church p parishioners and pastors tell their counsellors and the police. You need to repent and be born again. They're, they're too, they're, they won't get their seats at the council they won't get their community the, their pastor their bishops will be unhappy oh no you can't do that we've established this relationship years of secret service and hard work to the gospel of our of our head of our bishop of our archbishop or our pope or our our, our master we've we've done all this work you can't you serve us you can't you can't go teaching the gospel you can't go teaching I tell unto you nay, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. We'll we scare all the people away, won't make any money. These people are robbers. Um, they lie and they're in bed with liars. And you can't, you can't trust the flesh. It's... Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and make flesh his arm that leans upon it, and whose heart departeth from the gospel, whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when the good cometh. It be hard, he won't, he'll just ignore it and dismiss it. But shall inhabit the parts, places in the wilderness, he'll be barren, he'll be dry, won't be increasing. In the salt land not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green. Shall not see, not, not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all. Above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? You think of these religious ideas and these spirits that come in to move people and lift people, carry people, and because their heart is not in Christ, it's somewhere else, and it's desperately wicked. It's desperately easy to be led astray. It's like um, a load of adult f criminals going into a school playground and and fleecing all the children of their lunch money and their sweets and their their lunch boxes. It's that easy, it's that wicked, it's that quick to do the wrong thing. And if it's not in Christ, everything other than that is wrong, it's unfounded and it's, it's in transgression, it's in apostasy. If it's a Christian believing system, it's in apostasy. I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, even to go every man according to his ways. And according to the fruit of his doings. So there'll be people in those systems that, that they will be saved no matter what what they hold to. But that doesn't legitimise the whole system. Let's, let's continue, 11. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, 
so he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. So the partridge sitteth on the eggs and hatcheth them not. So he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days. So the the evil intention of the world get, carries on, but not always the people doing that evil sees the fruit of the outcome, doesn't see them hatch, doesn't see the eggs hatch. So he, and that's the sort of people who do works in secret, it's a generational coven, covenant. So he that get riches and, and they make a lot of money, but not by right. So these people shall leave them in the midst of his days, and, and at his end shall be a fool. Shall be a fool. So this is organised religion, priestcrafts, all those masons, all Jesuits, all these things will fit into this bracket. A glorious high throne from the beginning. A glorious high throne in Christ from eternity is the place of our salvation. Is the place of our security. Is the place of our rock, our foundation, our sanctuary. So the moment you're saved, it's the beginning and the eternal beginning and the eternal end of your sanctuary, a glorious high throne in Christ. From the beginning, it's the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. So all those religions will be ashamed, they'll be feeling like fools. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Thou art my praise. So there we go, the trust and surety of the Lord, the basic ABC for the faithful Hebrew, the faithful Christian, the faithful saint, the faithful believer in Christ. Right, let's go quickly finish with one more scripture, one or two more scriptures, Proverbs 1. whole chapter proverbs of solomon the son of david king of israel to know wisdom and instruction to receive the words of understanding to receive the instruction of wisdom justice judgment and equity to give subtlety to the simple to the young man knowledge and discretion a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel counsels to understand the proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace to thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood, they, lay, they lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief places of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof, 
Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as the desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Then shall they seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They uh, they were none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So there's the fate in, in the prophecy of the proverb true today true as it's ever remained that all these um things the lord brought an open show off made an open show off by his victory and his prophecy that these will be judged these will hang themselves and it's written in proverbs chapter one and it will be realized so the lord's outstretched today while it's called today while salvation remains my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. That's a bit of light. Understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lift up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and believe, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous, he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Read one more scripture and I think I'll close. Right, let's read Proverbs 3, 1 to 8. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall, be, shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favour and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honour the Lord with thy substance, and with thy first fruits of all thine increase. So thy barns, so, sh so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, my presses shall be burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastising of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that gets if understanding. So I'm going to leave it there. So a clear contrast and a, a promise for the believer that the Lord, you know, bless the blessings of the Lord in the correction, that wonderful correction, and to know that you're loved when you're corrected, to know when you're you're kept secure, that you're refreshed in the Word, that you're. You're kept safe. You, you've been guaranteed that salvation the day you believe. And how all these organised religions, they are robbers, they're liars. And uh, these uh, Jesuits, this is the, the Lord's extension to this um, 
group and band of despots, these whatever the motive, whatever their reasons, and all those people that support them and allow it. They allow it to continue. They're not the Catholics aren't against the Jesuits. You don't hear the Catholic Church speaking out against their murdering uh, they only have to look at the history of them to see what they've done. That's never been repented of. And the uh, members are quite happily wink at that. And, and for, for all anybody knows, get, uh, get pleasure, take pleasure from that, from being part of such a powerful, a powerful system which, which will lead you to hell. So if you're part of that system, I extend the invitation of, of the gospel, of the word of God. For you to seek, don't trust me, don't follow me. Don't look to me as an example. You look to the Lord Jesus Christ, his preserved word, and trust him. And come out of these organised religions. And if you're seeking Christ, you do not need the Alpha Course or any religious head or religious um, wolf in sheep's clothing. You, you need to become a sheep yourself first. And then all sheep are sheep. That's the simplicity of Christ. So I'm going to close there in the beloved name of Jesus Christ. And wish everybody Maranatha in the body of Christ. And and wish you and close this off now. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.